Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Salute to all the yellow pilled subscribers tuning in. You are always appreciated. In this video, we are going to discuss the Animatrix episode Kid Story and explain Mr. Popper's character throughout the entire Matrix universe. Spoilers will absolutely be required. And if this is your first time down here, or you simply want to know everything about the Matrix franchise, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any future content. Kid's Story is the fourth episode of The Animatrix. It was written by the Wachowskis and directed by Shinjiro Watanabe. Watanabe also wrote and directed the eighth Animatrix episode, Detective Story, which I previously discussed in a video here on this channel. He was originally given the option to work on a Wachowski script or submit his own. At first, he leaned heavily towards doing an original story, but ended up going with the kid's story first, then later submitted his own script for Detective Story when the opportunity presented itself. Even in the case of the kid's story, the original script that the Wachowskis wrote starts inside the high school and only covered the second half of the episode. So everything we see in the opening scene was added by Watanabe, approved by the Wachowskis, and ultimately gave the main character a more developed arc. The kid's voiceover was performed by Clayton Watson, who also played the same role in Reloaded and Revolutions. It is also worth noting that the kid is the only character other than Neo and Trinity who appeared in each form of Matrix media, including anime, film, the Matrix comic, and a video game. Clayton Watson also provided the voiceover for his character in The Matrix Online and was captured on video as a reference model for the animators of his character in this Animatrix episode. The kid's blue pill name is Michael Karl Popper, which is a nod to philosopher Sir Karl Popper. One of the 20th century's most influential philosophers of science, Popper is known for his rejection of classical views on the scientific method in favor of empirical falsification. According to Popper, a theory in the empirical sciences can never be proven, but it can be falsified, meaning that it can and should be scrutinized with decisive experiments. Or in other words, hypothesis, ideas, and beliefs must be challenged, and we should always be willing to revise our beliefs based on new evidence. Karl Popper was also a defender of Rene Descartes' theory of interactionism. Descartes is the philosopher most famous for cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. Interactionist dualism is the theory in philosophy of mind which holds that matter and mind are two distinct and independent substances that exert causal effects on one another. Remember that concept because it is going to come up later. The episode starts with a dream sequence where the kid is free falling and wakes up just before he hits the ground. He then goes to his computer and types, why does it feel more real when I dream than it does when I'm awake? How can I know if my senses are lying? The kid receives a reply, much like Neo and Trinity's online chat conversation in the first Matrix film. The message states, there is some fiction in your truth and some truth in your fiction. To know the truth, you must risk everything. The kid then responds, who are you? Am I alone? Next, we see the kid eating breakfast and then skateboarding his way to school. The high school was modeled after Alameda High School in California. Watanabe had never been to an American high school before, so he didn't really change much of the layout in the storyboards, but he did rename it to Clearview High School. During class, the kid writes in his notebook, Neo, Trinity, get me out of here, which is important to notice for two reasons. The first is that he tells us that like Neo looking for Morpheus in the first Matrix film, the kid was searching for Neo and Trinity. The second thing is that as soon as he finishes writing that sentence, his cell phone rings in class. When the teacher reprimands him for the phone ringing in class, the kid apologizes, turns the phone off, and says that it won't happen again. He sits down and puts the cell phone back in his book bag. The cell phone begins to ring again. This time the ring has a slightly warped tone. The kid says, I turned it off, I know I did, which would suggest that the call is by way of the Matrix being hacked. As the teacher approaches Mr. Popper, he finally answers the phone. Neo immediately says, they know you know, they're coming for you, get out, get out now. The teacher snatches the cell phone and says, you are in serious trouble, Mr. Popper. The kid pushes the teacher out of the way, jumps across desks, and climbs out the window, into the hallway, where he makes a break for his locker and gets his skateboard out. As he attempts to skate his way to escape, the kid is chased by agents, school security, and the teacher. All the skateboard moves were recorded by an ex-pro skater as a reference model so that the animators could give it a realistic look, but also so that Mr. Popper could display skateboard skills that most kids can only dream of having. The kid ends up cornered in the girl's bathroom 
and tries to escape by climbing a pipe outside the window. But once he gets up to the roof, agents and school security are already there waiting for him. The kid holds on to the railing of the roof, leans back, and says, Neo, I believe. I know it wasn't a dream. The kid lets go of the railing and free falls off the building exactly as he did in his dream that the episode opened with. The next scene opens with Michael Karl Popper's tombstone. The school teacher is present at his funeral and says, he's in another world now, make no mistake about that. In the following scene, the kid wakes up on the Nebuchadnezzar to Trinity saying that his vitals are good, he's gonna make it, which could suggest that the kid had to be revived upon rescue. She also says she didn't think self-substantiation was possible, to which Neo replies, apparently it is. Now if you watch the Animatrix episode World Record, the Zion Archive Guide does explain that only the most exceptional people become aware of the Matrix, and that those individuals must possess a rare degree of intuition. The kid says to Neo, I knew you'd save me, and Neo replies, I didn't save you kid, you saved yourself. The final shot of the episode goes back to the kid's computer monitor where he typed, who are you, am I alone? A reply is finally entered saying, you are not alone. And I believe that line speaks to a hidden connection between Neo and the kid that is briefly mentioned the next time we see Mr. Popper in the real world. The kid story episode of the Animatrix takes place between the original Matrix movie and Reloaded. When we see the kid in Reloaded, he is there to greet the Nebuchadnezzar crew when it docks in Zion just after the crisis meeting. Trinity says, How does he always know? Letting the audience know that the kid is always there to greet them when they return to Zion. Trinity goes on to say, You know what they say about the life you save? Neo humbly replies, I didn't save his life. Making reference to the events in the Animatrix episode and refusing to take any credit for the kids' self-substantiation. Now let's circle back to the theory of interactionist dualism. Philosopher Karl Popper divided reality into three worlds, the physical, the mental, and objective knowledge outside the mind, all of which interact. As a blue pill connected to the matrix, Michael Popper was disconnected from true objective reality. It is only after he finds Neo that his mind and body are able to interact with true objective knowledge. So from the kid's perspective, Neo did save him. We also know that the Nebuchadnezzar crew was the hovercraft responsible for rescuing the kid's body in the real world. The kid says that next year he'll be old enough to join a crew and he wants to serve on the Neb. The more I think about it, the more I think it's meant to be. Now it's fate. We know from the first Matrix film that Neo doesn't believe in fate. I told you kid, you found me, I didn't find you. You saved yourself. Yet once the kid believes in Neo, becomes aware of true objective reality, and once out of the Matrix, he immediately displays special abilities. First, he has the dream or premonition of the leap of faith that will be required for him to exit the Matrix. And this is important because Neo then has a dream or premonition of Trinity falling to her death, which set events in motion for Neo to be the first anomaly to choose the other door, declining to reset the Matrix so that Neo could save Trinity. The Oracle defines this as seeing the world without time. When Neo calls the kid, while he is still in class, he says, they know you know. The knowledge that Neo is real and the Matrix is not true reality allows the kid to bend the rules inside. Then he is suddenly able to skateboard like a professional and ultimately exit the Matrix, fulfilling the events of his dream. The acceptance of truth or objective knowledge may have been the reason why Michael Karl Popper was able to do these things, but then there's the question of how. Perhaps Neo shared his ability to see into the future with the kid Maybe the kid's experience taught Neo that those kind of visions were possible. Either way, the simple answer is that it was a miracle. Trinity says it was unbelievable and that she didn't think self-substantiation was possible. Unlike many various Matrix theories that inject words and concepts that aren't found anywhere in the dialogue or can't be found in other forms of Matrix media, the word miracle itself is found in these films on three separate occasions. The first of which I told you would come up again during the Cypher Explain video, when Cypher says if Neo is the one, there'd have to be some kind of miracle to stop him. In that moment, Tank and his lightning gun become the vehicle that stops Cypher and save Neo's life. What often goes unrecognized or forgotten is that the kid also saves Neo's life in Reloaded. It is the kid who yells down the hallway to deliver the real world spoon from the Spoon Boy just in time to prevent Bane from being able to ambush Neo 
before they leave Zion to visit the Oracle. When Neo believes that he can save Morpheus, Tank says, okay, so what do you need besides a miracle? To which Neo famously replies, guns, lots of guns. John Wick references aside, we know Neo and Trinity were successful, and not long after saving Morpheus, Mr. Anderson flexes the ultimate miracle of coming back to life after being shot to death. While we're on the subject of guns and close calls, once the machines breached the dock and the kid was trying to open the Zion gates so the hammer could fire its EMP, the kid was miraculously saved just in time by Z and her lightning gun. Hey, that looks kind of familiar. The next time the word miracle is used is when Locke says that Morpheus is the one who believes in miracles. Of course, Neo ends up pulling that one off too. And the kid himself gives the good news to all of Zion when he yells that the war is over. The point that I'm making here is the Matrix franchise is no stranger to the concept of miracles, actually makes references to them multiple times, and the kid himself played a role in a few of them. Neo, I believe. Morpheus also understands that the kid's belief in Neo is what gives him confidence, which is shown in the Matrix comic titled I Can't. The title is a clever play on words and reference to philosopher Immanuel Kant. Kant argued that space and time are mere forms of intuition which structure all experience and therefore that while things in themselves exist and contribute to experience, they are nonetheless distinct from the objects of experience. From this it follows that the objects of experience are mere appearances and that the nature of things as they are in themselves is consequently unknowable to us. Similar to Karl Popper's method of empirical falsification, Kant's sense of an enlightened approach and critical method required that if one cannot prove that a thing is, he may try to prove that it is not. For example, I can't prove what makes the kid special, but I can prove that he is not the systemic anomaly. Generally speaking, Kant also took a do unto others as you want them to do unto you approach to morality and asserted that people are justified in believing in God, even though they could never know God's presence empirically. In the Matrix comic I Can't, the kid and Morpheus are in an upgraded version of the jump program. Unlike the one we see with Neo in the original Matrix film, this training program has the added bonus of getting chased by a herd of agents. The comic starts with Morpheus telling the kid, it is time to choose. Consider it a leap of faith. When Morpheus tells the kid to jump, he is too afraid and hesitates. The agents push him off the edge and the kid replies, I can't. The kid goes on to say that the last time he was in the matrix, he took a nosedive off a 10 story building. Morpheus tells him that they still don't know how he survived that fall and self substantiation should not be possible. But if he goes back inside the matrix and falls a second time, he will die. This line is important because it reiterates that how the kid is able to self substantiate was never truly defined, but the event itself was a miracle. Morpheus then cryptically says that he will not always be here, which is arguably a foreshadow of his own death in the Matrix Online, and that the kid will have to give people the same choice that Neo gave him. The kid replies that Neo is dead, which tells us that this story takes place after Revolutions, but before the Matrix Online. The kid goes on to say, there's no one left to show me the way, and Morpheus replies, is that so? Seraph, Neo, and Trinity suddenly appear in the construct, and the kid says, they're not real, just part of the training program. Morpheus asks the kid, what is real? And Neo says, maybe this will help, while handing the kid a skateboard. The kid says, it's my choice. Neo opens fire on the agents, and the kid, no longer afraid, chooses to fight alongside Neo, and they defeat the agents. Trinity says, it's not over and the ghost twins begin to chase them, shooting a machine gun attached to a Hummer through the building and up onto the roof. The kid dodges the bullets on his skateboard, but one grazes his shoulder. Neo, Trinity, and Seraph all hyper jump from one rooftop to the next. The kid remembers what Morpheus said. It is time to choose. Consider it a leap of faith. This time he makes the jump and the twins crash into the adjacent building. When the kid jacks out and wakes up in the real world, his shoulder is bleeding. The kid says, Neo, he's still out there, isn't he? Showing me the way. To which Morpheus replies, if you believe. So you have a little foreshadow of Neo returning there, 
but more importantly, the emphasis on the power of belief and a consistency of the kid doing miraculous things when he believes in Neo. After Morpheus was assassinated in the Matrix Online, Michael the Kid Popper and Shimada formed the E Pluribus Neo group in reaction to the activities of the Cyphrite organization during the truce. I discussed the differences between each organization in the Matrix Online Explained video. Of course, I'll leave links in the description for anyone who needs to get caught up. EPN operated more like a theocracy than Zion, placing great faith in Neo, many believing that he watches over or guides their actions. Most members of EPN place a great stock in the power of belief, which is exemplified by not only abilities within the Matrix, but even by the kid's own awakening through self-substantiation. The phrase e pluribus Neo translates literally into Latin as from many, new, but is actually a take on the phrase e pluribus unum from many, one. EPN uses the word Neo in reference to the Zion operative Thomas Anderson and synonymous title, The One, making the sub-organizational title more akin to From Many, The One. Throughout the Matrix trilogy, many characters believed in The One, from Morpheus to Tank, Trinity and the Kid, even programs like the Oracle and the Keymaker. Through the power of belief, they all played their individual roles in facilitating the path of The One. Too often the miracle factor is ignored when discussing the Matrix, but hopefully, this analysis of Michael Karl Popper's multiple Matrix media appearances encourages you to believe that teamwork can certainly manifest miracles. If you appreciate this yellow-pilled content, be sure to share it on other platforms like Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, and remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream, that is self-awareness. <laughs>